In this video, we are going to use the hardscape tool to create a road, or possibly could be considered a ramp, on a side model. The road will have a varying width. It will have a place for another road to join in up here. The curving will be on either side, but not where the road joins or at the start or the end. It will basically fit to the site model at each end of the road, but the slope of the road will be controlled and the site model will ultimately fit to the road. It will fit to the upper edge of the curb. So this is what we're going to look at creating. The file itself has two layers, a site model modifiers layer and a site model layer. And I always recommend putting site modifiers on a separate layer. We look at the site model. When you do that, in site model settings, in the general tab, you're going to want to use site modifiers on. Choose a custom set of layers, and when you first choose that, this dialog will open, allowing you to check the layers that the site modifiers are on. It's much easier when you're working with the site model to have the site modifiers on one or more other layers because you can then isolate them much more easily. To get started, we will first of all delete the existing hardscape and grade limits object and that will reveal the polyline that I have developed to represent the outline of this object we're creating. This is on the site modifiers layer so let's make that layer the active layer and we can now see the selection handles. We'll just update the site model so that it now is basically representing the existing terrain. So let's begin by selecting the polygon, click on the object and choose create objects from shapes. Note that this is also up here, create objects from shapes in the AEC menu or possibly it's the landmark menu as well. And the object type, we need to choose Landscape. we will choose to show the properties dialog and to delete the source shape. So it's going to delete this shape. Go ahead and click OK. Now in this dialog, let's start with the configuration. The configuration is actually going to be boundary. Draw 2D. You can see the settings here. Now this draw border needs to be checked if you want to create the curb because that's what we'll use and the curb width is 200 millimeters about eight inches the pathway borders is not applicable to this kind of object in the draw 3d this is where it gets important you want to choose the 3d type to be a slab and the configuration should be a path I'm working in Vectorworks 2023 SP5. Now the main area components, let's take a look at what we've got there. So I've got two components. The first is a curb, and this is 150 millimeters thick. And then we have the actual roadway itself, which is 300 millimeters. Now this you can make these any size that you want. Note that I have put the curb into the non-plot class for the main area component. And you'll see why I've done that in a moment. The other thing to note here is that the datum is set to the top of the component. So what this means is that the site model is going to come to the top edge of the curb. 
Now there is another way of doing what I'm, I'm doing here. If you don't need to do cut and fill calculations, you don't actually need to have two components. You can just use the datum here to control the relationship of the curve to the, or the, the boundary to the rest of the object. But um, in this case, we, we're using this. You'll, you'll see what I mean in a moment once, it, once we get underway. So that's the main area components and the border components are very similar. Same thicknesses, except that the class of the curve here is just going to be the object class because we don't want to be able to hide that with the, um, with the main component we do want to hide the curb where it sits on top of the road. And again, that will become clear in a moment. And we make sure that we've got the datum set correctly here. We'll go ahead and click OK to that. The overall thickness is 450. And let's go ahead and click OK. And you can see that we've got a hardscape object now. And we've the, the the program has created this center line and we need to adjust this a little bit down the end here. It hasn't got that ending quite right and we, we don't want this kind of little um, interruption here where we've got this adjoining road. So let's take the reshape tool and when you have a hardscape object selected with the reshape tool, you'll get an extra option here that allows you to edit the longitudinal profile. So if we click on that option and we set this back to the first option, you can see now that we've got these control points. Now let's just zoom in here. Basically, we don't need any of these. So if we go to the delete vertex mode, because I'm inside an object, if I hold the shift key down and then draw a marquee, then I can draw that marquee around all of those vertexes and or vertices and just hit delete and it will delete them. Now, when you have curves in, in a hardscape, you will get lots of vertices. You can go, go along and clean them up if you want to, but there's not really that much need. The only reason that you would clean them up is if you were trying to use the longitudinal profile, define the shape of the longitudinal profile, but we'll actually be using the uh, transverse profiles to control the slope. And this one down the bottom here, we don't necessarily want to delete that, we want to move it so that it's back in the center here. Okay, so that's step number one. Now step number two, we need to, we'll go back to the 2D selection tool, and you'll notice that in the hardscape, we can set the start and end elevation. Now I know the start elevation, that's up here, is about 19 meters, so let's put 19 meters in there. And you can see already that we've now got the slope being indicated on here, which is pretty steep, but the end elevation is about 10 meters. So we'll put that in at 10 meters. This file's units are actually in millimeters, so I can type just 10M and it will get converted to 10,000 millimeters. Let's go ahead and update the site model now. And we can do this with the hardscape object selected by clicking the update site model. And you'll notice when we did that, that the contours virtually remained unchanged. And that's because there's no grade limits to specify where the terrain is going to be modified. So if we go to a 3D view, you'll see that basically we've just cut vertically along the edges of the roadway.
Now there's one other option that we need to turn on here and that's this option here to cut the site model. So currently the top of the hardscape is coincident with the top of the site model. So if we turn on cut the site model and then update the site model again, you'll see that we can now see the roadway. You can see we've got the curb here. Now, you remember I, I mentioned earlier about the main area components and we put the curb in the non-plot class. So if I turn the non-plot class on, you'll see that this actually fills up and now we have the, the curb component um, is filling in above the road component. So by making that, putting that in the non-plot class and turning it off, that's how we get the curb here. And if we want to see the road to be gray, a bit gray, we can always come in here, edit this, and just give it a gray color. You could also do it with, with a texture if that was what was desired. Now you'll notice that the curbing has carried around the end here and also at the other end the same thing has happened and also on our road here. So how can we fix that? Well that's pretty easy to fix. What we want to do is to actually edit that underlying polygon that we use to create this with and we can edit that by going to the modify menu to edit hardscape. Notice the keyboard shortcut for that. That's going to take us back to the polygon. Here's the polygon. So what we want to do now is to select the hide or show edges mode and hide the edges that we we don't want to have occurred, which is those three points there, this object then becomes unclosed and when we exit the path you'll see now that there is no curb along that edge or the other ones. Now if you wanted to adjust this at this end perhaps to, so this remember this is the existing terrain position um, if you wanted to say bring this up to to this point here, then we could come in here and modify this. Um, we made it say nineteen five hundred, and then we'll update the site model. And now we're we're not cutting quite so much in there. Right, so let's jump back to a top plan view now. And we've got an 8% grade all the way down, which is steep, but it's, it's okay for a driveway or a, a road. But what we'd like to do here is to have this part here to be horizontal, so we don't want to have a slope on the road just where this other road is going to be joining it. Now up here, I just happen to have a stake object, and the stake object is set as the mode set to set elevation to site model. So wherever I place this, it's going to read out the elevation of the site model. So if I place it in the middle of the road here, it's about 18.3 meters that we want for this little section here. So let's go ahead and select the hardscape and then click on the little blue arrow here and choose Add Transverse Profile. And we do that and we can come down here and snap onto the beginning of that little curve into that side road there. And we're going to do that one more time. Now we can just use this one here to add transverse profile. 
and we've got those added now. We're wanting to change the elevation of these to be 18.3 meters. So we can choose edit transverse profile this time. And when you're doing this, it's a lot easier to just turn off seeing the rest of the site model. If you don't see this button here, which is show other objects while in edit mode, you can open this pop up here and check that option and it will then appear up here. That's very easy to uh, easier to see when you can turn that off. All right. We need the reshape mode here. Sometimes you'll find you have to click this option here. It just there won't be anything here selected. So you, you click on that and then we can just grab this, move it a little bit and just type 18300, hit return, hit return a couple of times and you want to see that jump up like that. You can see that the text here is kind of right, but if you want to be sure about that, you can come to the text menu, set the size to something smaller, and you can see that it's now at 18.3 meters. Note that this does not have to be a straight line. You can add um, profiles. You can slope this to have a different slope at each end. So you could add camber onto the road if you wanted to, or do whatever you need to on the road in terms of the cross shape at that point. Then we exit the profile and now you can see that this one here is at 18300. Let's do the same for this and you can see also that the slope has changed to 4% here but now it's steeper in this section. Eighteen three oh oh. Hit return twice. Exit. Now, all of this information that we see on here, the text and everything, is all controllable. Down here, if you don't want to see the profile lines, we can turn them off. And same with the transverse profiles as well. Okay, so let's update the site model now. And take a look at this. In 3D. You can see that this is kind of flattened this out a little bit here where this, this roadway is joining on. And, and using that technique is, is how you can set profiles along the path if you want to control the, the levels all the way down the path. So you can have any number of profiles along the, the length of the path. I think you've got the idea of how to add them. So the next thing I want to do is to add the grade limits. Now, there's a, there's a couple of ways that you can add grade limits. Currently, attempting to use the create grade limits from planar pad is not really hooked up to these hardscape objects because it's not a planar object. You can use this. Uh, with some degree of success, and I'll show you that in a moment. But um, what I'm going to do is to actually use the object that the, the polyline that's inside here. Uh, so once again, we're going to modify, uh, go to edit hardscape, and I'm just going to copy this object, exit the path, paste in place. And then I'm going to choose closed to just close it up again. Then we'll take the offset tool and we'll set it to offset by distance mode, offset original object, and the offset is five meters. So we're setting it five meters. 
and we'll just click outside here and that's basically going to be our grade limits initially. The only thing we need to do is to, for grade limits to be operational, they mustn't overlap the edge of the site model. So if we double click this and I can then draw a marquee around those ones that are overlapping there, press the minus up there, hit delete, and it is going to change this, so I just need to revert that back to straight point, which that should be right, and then a slight modification at this point. The other thing you want to avoid is to having this overlapping the hardscape object at all. If that happens, then it also won't work. All right, so we've got the shape right. Now we'll use our objects from shapes. Right click on the object, create objects from shapes. This time we want a site modifier. And delete source shape, show properties dialog. We want it to be grade limits. We want it to affect the proposed. We don't really need to see the surface in 3D, so we can turn that off. Click OK. And this also has the site model update site model button on it. So when I click this, you are going to see the, the contours change. So let's now look at this. And you can see that we're getting quite a nice result. You can see that the terrain is coming to the edge, the top edge of the curb. It's fitting nicely around here. By the way, I could have added more profiles here to have that kick up. You wanted this actually to kick up a little bit because this is a hill here going up. If I'd added a profile that was flat to about this point and then um, rose up a little bit, then that would uh, enable that to sort of flow up a bit more easily, but I'll leave that up to you to work out. So that's one way to create the grade limits. Now the other way to do it is what I mentioned a moment ago. And to make this work, you actually have to, to set the 3D type to none. Okay, so we set the 3D type to none momentarily and go to the terrain menu and create grade limits from planar pad. And this time we want a batter slope. And let's say we want it to be a maximum of 15 degrees and a maximum offset. So you could say 15 degrees, but you know, you might have a house that's here or an adjoining property. So let's not go more than, say, 20 meters from the edge. And then you've got your test increment. So this is important in terms of the time that this process will take. So with it set at five meters, it's going to look at this at a point here and work out the uh, the, the offset, then move five meters along and work out another one. The default value for this is, I don't know, 900 and something, 912, so under a meter. Or, so it, it, it can be very slow and you could have very detailed um, grade limits objects. So I, I found five meters for this kind of site size works pretty well. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now this is not going to be perfect because it's not really a supported process at this point. It will take a while and you can see that it hasn't been totally successful but this area along here is probably pretty right. Um, so what you can do is to kind of combine the two the two objects so it's obviously failed along this point here and probably 
it's because there's actually not very much difference between the the edge here and the site. So we just need to tidy this up a little bit. Now let's double click it and remember I said before you can't have these overlapping the site model, sorry the hardscape or the edge of the site model. And we're just going to tidy this up a bit so I've got the minus selected here and I'm going to hold the shift key down then I can draw a marquee around some of these points and just hit delete. Probably that point there. And we'll just do some quick mods with this one. We'll take the these ones down to the previous. I'm pressing the till key here to just defeat the snapping. We need to add a couple more here. Put one there. All right, so we'll get rid of this one and let's update our site model and take a look at that in a 3D view. Okay, so actually a light source here, I might get rid of that just to give us a bit more shading. Okay, so you can see that it's it's got this pretty right, you know, this is about a 15 degree slope, whatever it was we, we nominated. And so that pretty well covers it. Hopefully there are a few tips there you'll pick up on and uh, and be able to plow ahead.